Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and in this movie, I'm going to give you a guide to Novation's latest synthesizer, Ultranova. In case you're not familiar with the history, Novation have been making synths since time began, and the Supernova was their flagship product. A while after that, they brought out the X Station, which was an amazing instrument that combined a controller with an audio interface and a synth, making it the ideal centerpiece for a home studio or live rig. Ultranova stays on this theme by combining the same types of product together. Only this time the synth has an expanded engine and better DAW integration, and the keyboard has more audio I.O. and Novation's Automap MIDI control capabilities, plus a load more cool stuff. Let's check it out. It's pretty easy to get going with Ultranova when you first power it up. There's a big synth button telling you what mode you're in, with the screen showing you the current patch number and name. The two big knobs then operate the main controls, which are browsing through the patches and then bringing the filter cutoff up and down. Then, if you want to search for a particular type of preset, you just hit the Patch Browse button, after which you can search by category or musical genre which can make things much quicker. Now the main difference on this synth to some of their previous ones is that there are much fewer controls. As you can see, there are no dedicated envelope sliders or other things you expect to see on a synth. What they've opted for instead is one multifunctional row of encoders with synth edit buttons for choosing the section you want to adjust. So, for example, if I wanted to create a filter sweep on this bass sound, I would bring down the cutoff, then go to the filter section and turn up the filter envelope amount, then go to the filter envelope section, which I do by pressing envelope, and then selecting envelope 2, as there are 6 in total, and then I can edit the attack or decay to produce a range of different sounds. This kind of editing is fine for making small adjustments like this, but more serious patch composition isn't quite as much fun as it was with the older design. However, the reason for this is that Ultranova comes with a software editor, which makes the whole process much more visual and allows the instrument to properly integrate with the DAW. Now the editor is simply a plugin for editing the onboard sounds, not for making sound itself, as the handy message tells you when you boot it up for the first time. But essentially it works the same way as a software instrument, in that it's loaded onto a MIDI track, after which Ultranova's keys no longer control the onboard synth all the time, but only when you hit record on the track with the editor on. The sound still comes from the hardware of course, so you need to choose Ultranova as an input to an audio track if you want to get the sound into your session. But it now means you can create MIDI clips on the track for controlling the instrument without having to do any MIDI routing. And you get a nice view of all the synth settings in the editor window, which can be edited with the mouse or the hardware, or a combination of the two. So it's the best of both worlds really. In here it's easier to see exactly what the synth has to offer which is three oscillators and a noise generator, two filters, a modulation router with up to 20 slots, and an effects section with five slots, which can be stacked or chained how you like. Plus you've got the usual arpeggiator, and then a cool vocoder and chord option, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So let's go through some of the sections now to see what options you get. In the oscillator section then, you've got three identical oscillators, which are very extensive. Bringing up the menu here, you can see you've got a load of choices for the waveform, with all the classic analogue types, and a load of pulse waves too. Then 20 further digital waveforms, and then 36 wavetables, which are nine digital waves combined together, that you can morph between to create more unique sounds. Of course, you can scroll through all these types with the knob on the hardware to make things quicker. So, if I pick a wavetable then, I can then use the wavetable index dial to scroll through the waveforms in the wavetable. 
which you can hear makes a cool sound. This dial is a great one for modulating, which you can hear if I use this envelope to shift the dial up and down now, which makes the sound really interesting. Editing with the plugin and the hardware makes such a difference to the enjoyment and speed, with everything being quickly accessible and on display, but also hands on. So if I want to add the other oscillators now, I can just turn up their levels in the mixer section and then set them up the way I want. Some nice controls here are the virtual syncing dials, which really colour the sound with interesting harmonics. And then also the density dials, which give the sound way more punch. Now I can shape the sound with the amp envelope. Then you can hear we've already got quite a nice sound. One cool feature on Ultranova is when playing the patches, the encoders can be set to one of two modes for adjusting parameters. In the software, there's an animate section, which allows you to set the encoders to tweak or touch mode. Tweak mode is just like on other soft synths, where you have macros that you can assign to important parameters. But touch mode is really cool. It allows you to simply touch the encoders to create a particular effect. For example, with this patch, I've set up a few different modulation routings. The first four are on the filter frequency, with a couple of envelopes and two LFOs at different synced rates. Then the last two are different envelopes, creating pitch slides. Then I've turned on the touch encoder for each routing, and set the envelopes to re-trigger when the encoder is touched as well. So now you can hear when I hold down a note and touch the different encoders, that I can create all sorts of different effects, which is particularly cool for a live performance, but also useful for creating parts in the studio. And there are loads of other cool bits of attention to detail here, with heaps of routing options in both the filter and effects sections, selected using the setup switches, with the routing clearly marked for each one so you know where the signal's going. And another thing that's handy is that all of the synth settings are saved with your session. So if you've been working on a patch with the editor, but don't save it to the hardware, then everything will be reloaded next time you boot the session up. In addition to the arpeggiator then, which is a common type of rhythmic effect. You've also got the gator, first seen on the Zyre synth keyboard, which is a bit like a step sequencer that basically triggers a gate to reopen on whatever steps you choose in the pattern display, which can be edited using the hardware or software. then also the chord feature, which is really simple to use, with buttons for turning on a learn mode for the chord, and then confirming the played notes as the ones you want to use, after which playing one note will recreate that chord. The vocoder's also a fun part of the synth, and couldn't be easier to use, with a mic input on the front panel that the included mic connects to after which you press the vocoder button and sing or talk into the mic whilst playing the keyboard. I haven't talked about the included sounds much yet, but there are loads of cool ones in the factory banks, tending towards the clean analogue sound that Novation are famous for, 
but also some dirtier ones too. Plus, there are a number of additional sound banks supplied free of charge on the Novation website when you want to get hold of some new patches. On the MIDI controlling side, if you press the Automap button, the encoders switch to controlling mode, so it can be used to adjust parameters in the DAW, such as the mixer, instruments and effects. For me personally though, it's all about the synth and audio interfacing, as I prefer to use other dedicated controllers for my DAW and instruments. And finally, the audio and MIDI inputs and outputs can be found on the rear panel. And as you can see, there are a fair few, with four audio outputs, meaning you've got an additional stereo pair if you want to do any queuing for DJing purposes or otherwise, or use them as auxiliary outputs to carry out effects processing, for example. So in summary, Ultranova is a well thought out synth with a great sound. The instrument side alone is worthy of praise, with a load of cool features and integrating nicely with the DAW. So you get all the benefits of a powerful external sound module combined with the ease of use of a software GUI. It's the perfect choice for use in a live situation because it functions as an audio interface and a controller keyboard for playing all your different instruments with three octaves, which is just enough room to play properly. But it also has onboard sounds. So if anything goes wrong with your computer, then you can still make some noise. But it's a great choice for the studio too if you want to simplify your setup and get some quality new sounds. That's all for now then, see you next time.